What's good, everybody? Mr. J here, and hey, coming live to you from the work office today. This is the work office. I plan to do this tonight after I got home and react to the new Dodge Charger video, but everybody keeps on coming to me about it. It's not going to be a blind video. I can't do it. I do know a little bit about it. So, uh, you know, had to hop on here while I'm at work and do the best that I can do for a blind review. Um, yeah, man, I got this queued up on my phone. A little different than the usual setup today, but we're going to go ahead, tune in, and check out what Dodge has in store. I am I am pretty excited because this is going to be indicative of what, you know, the Chrysler umbrella is going to have going forward. So let's take a look. The thing you need to know about the Dodge brand is that we always get to where we're going without ever forgetting where we've been. The miles under our belts, the 100 plus years of know-how and swagger fuels us with the highest octane, gives us the greatest charge, and always will. All right, old school detail. Now, I don't know if they're about to bring this up or not, but uh, fun fact, electric cars actually predate gasoline powered engines. Newspapers. Scat Pat. We get, the, we get the police. <laughs> they got the police looking. All right. So I will say right now, um, I'm not I'm not really feeling the 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 side profile. The rear it looks good. It looks like a charger from the rear uh, and the front. It looks it looks good, but I can't stand the side profile. I don't like how long it looks. Um, maybe it's because it's a two door. <laughs> but let's keep going. Look at the Dodge Brothers. <laughs> Holy Hamtramck, what is that? And who the hell are you? Whoa, whoa, calm down, guys. I'm on your side. You can put down those wrenches. I'm on your team. It's okay. Damn, it wasn't easy getting here. And I don't have a lot of time. So here's the deal. You don't realize it yet but you're at an extremely important decision point in your lives. Do you want to keep working for the system or do you want to take on the system? Well, I know oh, what we need you to do all right. and I'm here to make sure you see why. I'm just trying to rock the boat. can't afford for you to back down. You're just a couple of incredibly ballsy moves away from ensuring your legacy and making history. And this is your future. I know it sounds crazy and I swear to you, I haven't been drinking. You're going to want to get in. Let's just say that you brothers created a brotherhood. You built something more than a car that made the guys across town mad. You guys made your name on big city streets, back roads, Shots fire forward. and on the high banks of racetracks across America. Look, the Dodge name became known for standout design and performance. The name Dodge, your name 100 years from now has become synonymous with baddest, quickest, fastest, dodgiest. But right now, we're <laughs> under attack. Your legacy is under attack. We need your help, spiritually, of course, to fight the system, not to comply, 
but to compete, because regardless of what kind of power that propels us, this brand must always be pushed forward by the energy and attitude you guys instilled in us. This next generation charger is proof of that. It's fueled by the Brotherhood, but powered by lithium. The elixir? No, 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 no. We did the car that runs on alcohol last year. I'm talking about batteries driving electric drive motors to deliver instant torque to all four wheels. The combination is gonna redefine what it means to never lift and push the performance of this new Dodge muscle car beyond any conventional, no prep muscle car. But most people think electric cars are supposed to save the planet. Electric cars are supposed to be green and politically correct. So this thing must be super efficient and environmentally friendly, right? I don't know, maybe. But that was never the point. The point was that they told us we couldn't sell Hemis, but they never told us that we had to be boring and slow. So we... Okay, okay, so right out right now, uh, that little tidbit right there with that, uh, you know, if they have to be environmentally friendly and everything. That's actually an argument that I brought up recently to a comment on, you know, electric video that I did a little while back. Somebody, you know, was arguing that about the green, brought up the whole green conversation. And I was like, look, I don't, I don't know that everybody who drives EVs are driving them specifically because they are green. I think, you know, they're driving them more for convenience. I like that angle that they're going with. Um, it kind of like, I think they're taking this whole approach right. I feel it. Um, I like the whole fight, the power and everything. You can kind of tell the Dodge is pissed off right now. I'm, I'm liking this energy. Took the rules, found the gray areas and used them. Used them against them to build a muscle car, to build a Dodge muscle car and slide it under the wire that the regulators threw down in front of us like spike strips on the highway. Look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they, they <laughs> I, I I like this. They're directly going after the they're feeding right into like police chases and everything that you see going crazy with they, they know who their audience is and they are speaking directly to it. I really like that. Um and uh I see what they're doing. I like what they're doing here too, is like they're not trying to make an environmentally friendly car. They're trying to make car they're trying to continue to make a car as backhanded right into the face of hey you said we couldn't do this a hey, uh hate to prove you wrong but uh everything that is cool about this car from the far wing design it doesn't look like a typical battery electric melted jelly bean to the 325 rear tires to the e-rep transmission 325s the ultra high performance 550 kilowatt discharge rate all work together to ensure maximum acceleration but hurt efficiency and normally you would never do things like that. But when was the last time anyone calculated the fuel economy of their muscle car? Yeah, they never did. That's not why they bought it. And that's not why anyone will buy the new Charger Daytona. They're gonna buy it because of the stunning. See, I talked about this in my video uh, earlier this morning. I was like, if anybody's gonna do it right, it's gonna be Dodge. Why, why would anybody, why would anybody doubt Dodge? They haven't failed so far. Why would they? Why would we expect them to start failing now? Uh, this this type of energy is exactly why they were the perfect ones to do an EV muscle car. Stop you in your track styling and the segment redefining performance. The 400 volt scat pack Charger Daytona will put out over 670 horsepower and over 600 pound feet of instant torque transferred through a selectable all wheel drive system. It's gonna out accelerate today's red eye supercharger. <laughs> what? <laughs> he said 600 horsepower, all wheel drive. He's just now saying that it's gonna be faster than the Hellcat. Let me, let's, let me run this back. The Scat Pack is going to be faster than a red eye. 670 horsepower 670 horsepower and he says selectable all-wheel drive meaning that it might not always be all-wheel drive so that you can do burnouts and stuff we'll see v8 and i'm not even talking about the 800 volt srt banshee system yet look the bottom line is this is not the electric car that they want the brotherhood to have is that is right not. This is an electric right. muscle car that will make the rule makers, the suits, and the lawyers wish they hadn't had a kale smoothie for lunch when they launched this thing. What's a kale smoothie? I don't really know, but you don't want one. What you will want 
is the Charger Daytona's game-changing interior. With more Trick Tech, it delivers best-in-class rear cargo space with a rear hatch and full flat seats. You're gonna get muscle car design and UV-like cargo carrying capacity. The thing is amazing. But what could be even better than a muscle coupe with UV capability and the functionality of a hatch? Well, easy. Okay, all right, all right. So, it's a four-door. There is a four-door variant right there. That orange drawn was a four-door. Uh, and that was probably one of my bigger problems with, with it when I saw it like last year when they first unveiled it was that it was a two-door, which is kind of the opposite of how I felt about the Charger coming back the first time. When it came back the first time and it came back as a four-door, I was like, man, why is it a four-door? And then I grew up. Then I grew up and I appreciate the four-door a lot more than coupes. Uh, so now in the opposite side, when I saw it being a coupe, I was like, why did they make it a coupe? But they're going to offer it in two variants. Smart move there. Appreciate that. A four-door with all that as well. Yes, the Charger Daytona will be available as a two-door coupe and the four-door sedan hatch, both with the same wide-body stance that will put the passive world on notice. And what else puts the passive world on notice is our Pratsonic chambered exhaust system. It screams as loud as today's supercharged V8s. I'm still not feeling this. I'm still not feeling the fake sounds. Um, yeah, they could have foregone this <laughs> and it would have been just fine. But, uh, you know, maybe seeing it in person, maybe seeing it in person would be- Whether you opt for the 496 horse RT or the 670 horsepower Scat Pack, or later the SRT Banshee, Every Charger carries the Dodge Torch when it comes to touching all the senses. Look, I know most people don't know the history. They don't know that there actually were electric cars before gas cars. And don't know that you guys dedicated your lives to coming up with something better than battery electric vehicles over 100 years ago. So you've got to be wondering why we've come full circle. Well, these electric Dodges are like time machines. They can take you back while launching you forward at the same time. This is more than a direct descendant of your origin story. It's a direct connection to the spirit of the past while powering this brand into tomorrow. Oh yeah, that wasn't the sound of the Fratsonic chamber in the Banshee. That was the scream of the most power dense internal combustion engine Dodges ever installed in a muscle car. In 2025, the all-new Charger will also be available as a six-pack with the twin-turbo Hurricane. Standard output hits the streets with 420 horsepower, and the HO spins the dyno to 550 horsepower. But these aren't old-school engines. No, these Hurricanes embody everything that we've learned about piston power since the doors of the Dodge Brothers shop first swung open. Twin turbos that perform like they're constantly spooled and a drive line that houses an eight-speed transmission and an all-wheel drive system standard. But it's a Dodge. So we also let you turn it off and tear it up like a traditional rear-wheel drive muscle car. This is what a brand can build when you're always building on a promise to never lift. This is what happens when you work to deliver never before again and again. This is a story of American ingenuity that runs from right now straight back to your shop which is where we need to go, because you've got work to do, a legacy to cement, to build a foundation and a bridge to the future. All right, guys, the ride is over, but it's also just getting started. So thank you for this bloodline of ingenuity for this brotherhood, for writing the source code for these cars. Because it's not yet time for your legacy to go. It's go time for the next generation of Dodge Muscle.
<laughs> all right, all right, all right. So uh, a lot to digest there. Um, I can't get over. I can't get over that last little bit there. That that really felt like a shot at Chrysler and that Halcyon concept that they just put out, man. Like, oh, <laughs> I know that that's the parent company, and I, I wonder if that was a last minute edit is after the reaction to the Halcyon and and how that went out. Ugh. But different different thing. But I definitely Dodge hit it off with that presentation. Um, I, I was you know. I was very well uh, pleased with that presentation. They did exactly what they needed to do. A lot of times when I watch Dodge presentations, I feel like they're kind of over hypey and everything. And like they talk about that everything that everybody wants to hear, but they always kind of feel like they're hyping it up too much when it don't really need to be hyped up. Not with this presentation. I think they did exactly what they needed to do with this presentation. That's the thing about Dodge. Dodge is very in tune with the people who drive their cars. They really are. I think that's what they do very very well they know what people want and they just give it to them unlike chrysler we was catching them unlike Aguilar. they just give the people what they want so a lot of things that they hit off on there they were talking about they directly addressed like concerns about you know the future and being ev future and what was that going to be like they talked about it they hit it right on the head they didn't avoid it they directly talked about it and they talked about it in the most dodge way possible which is awesome um that presentation was really really cool dodge hit that uh, out of the park uh with the presentation uh as far as the car goes um I, it's hard not to be excited. It's hard not to be excited. Um, you know, this is a 300 channel, um, not a charger channel, but uh, you know, it's the sister company. So definitely looking at what's going on here to see what the future of Mopar will be like. And I've got to say, after watching that, I think, you know, we can stop fretting. We can stop all of the, the mumbo gumbo that Mopar has done. Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that they are going to change not only just Mopar, but like the landscape of EV cars in general, period. Uh, just for the simple fact that they didn't make this car trying to make an EV. They made this car trying to make a sports car. And that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they delivered. Now they didn't mention anything about rain, but exactly as they said in the presentation, and as I've said, since you know we started learning about an electric future, uh, we don't really care about miles per gallon really anyway. So why would we really worry about range? <laughs> but um, it is going to be curious to see what range and everything is with those. Uh, I like the fact that they offer it in a two door and a four door. Um, the V6 was kind of a surprise, kind of not. You know, I was kind of hearing that there was going to be variants of the car. Um, it's kind of a surprise because... Um, just because you know the the ev push now um so you would kind of think that you know for people who aren't going to be willing to go to an ev that they would just go straight for the gasoline but um i think they know what they're doing they know what they're doing they know that people are going to want these cars and uh yeah, I don't think they're going to have any trouble selling any of these at all. It's cool to see the Hurricane actually come out. I don't know if the Hornet actually got the Hurricane engine or not, um, but we've been hearing about this Hurricane for quite some time. And what did they say? 500 horsepower? Five, 570 horsepower? So it's actually get putting out... <laughs> That's putting out some really good numbers right there. People are going to have fun tearing up that, that thing. Um... And just to echo what the, what was going on in the video, what are they, what are they going to do next? They're going to go after twin turbos next. They're going to go after V6s next. <laughs> Gotta love Dodge. Gotta love their presentation and, and just how they're so in tune with what everybody wants. Um, the car, is, uh, I mean, I'm not a fan of the looks of the car, uh, but, you know, um, driving is not always about the looks. It's always about the feel, the feel of the car and you know is the most important thing um the interior of the car is uh, is very on par with with dodge 
You know, I wasn't blown away by anything. Um, I'm glad that they didn't do anything too crazy. Um, and so like not not to lead you on, not to lead you wrong. I think the interior is is perfectly mediocre. Like I think that's exactly when I didn't want to see no Chrysler house on bullshit with the uh, with the you know just nothing going on in there and seats made out of paper and all that garbage. No, keep that in there. They got bucket seats in there. Looks very practical. Um, you know, screen's kind of small and everything, but um, you know, hey, you know, it doesn't need to be 100% EV just because it's 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 an EV, right? Like, I love the practicality there. Uh, would I ever drive one? Probably not. Not other thing, not something to daily. Um, I wouldn't want to own one. Uh, if a front buddy had one, I'll definitely get in. It would definitely tear it up in that, John. But, um, you know, not something I would, I would like. I don't like the body style. I really don't like the body style. Um, it looks more appropriate in the four door. I think that two door was just really abrasive to me. It looked really, really long. It looks really long as a two door. So four door in person, maybe it looks better. Maybe it grows on me. Uh, I like the back end. I like the light bars. Um, you know, I like a lot of the aesthetics that's going on. 325s, love that. Ooh, it's a wide body. <laughs> love wide bodies all day long. But uh, yeah, that's, um, I, you know, despite what I was saying in the previous two videos and I feel like the future is bright. So uh, hats off to Dodge. I think they, they nailed this one out of the park. We'll have to stay tuned and see what, you know, as more of the numbers go on. Now they didn't unveil the Banshee. They did not talk about the, the top tier level there. Um, they're keeping that one under wraps. So we'll have another unveil. And if I caught on correctly, it sounds like that phase on um, the the sound, the phase on whatever they're calling it, the, the, the artificial noise. It did sound like they said in that video that the artificial noise was only going to be on the Banshee, Banshee version. I could have misinterpreted that. Um, and if that's the case, uh, you know, I think that's a good move. I, I don't really want to be rolling around hearing a whole bunch of artificial sounds. Uh, one one thing that could be cool about it, though, one thing that could be cool about it, you know, with the custom car community would be, uh, you know, tapping into that face on sound and altering the sounds you know putting different sounds on there i mean like i can already picture a charger rolling down the street with the jetson sound effect behind it like that would just that would be pretty damn funny but um you know the custom car community it'll be um it'll be cool to see what's gonna go on with these cars um you know they didn't do anything that evs do they didn't have the big ugly rims everything was kept very very practical and prepped for you know the custom car community so it's going to be very interesting moving forward seeing what people do with these cars as they get their hands on them and uh you know it's kind of it's kind of a a, a, a scary thought right now that um these cars got even faster they got even faster even quicker I mean, we saw all the accidents and everything that's going on right now with the ones that we got and now we're about to kick it up a notch <laughs> but you know it's all fun so can't hate on it too much but hey uh i'm glad i watched this i'm glad i tuned into this this is my reaction to the video of future for mopar is bright i love what i'm seeing there i've already liked what i'm seeing out of ram um the ram charger and the ram revolution i'm hoping that they're going to do video and releasing videos on those here pretty soon uh, i am in the market for a ram revolution so yeah outside of chrysler the <laughs> future's looking pretty bright all right everybody get down in that comment section let me know what you're feeling about this let me know if you're going to buy one, if there's something on your list. Um, you know, my audience is usually 300 gang. So, uh, you know, let me know in the feelings what you're feeling. Do you think that Chrysler adapts some of this going forward and puts it into their own cars? What are you thinking? Let me know down in the comments section. All right. I'm Mr. J. I got to get back out there to work. I've been radio silent for this whole time. <laughs> they wondering where I'm at, thinking I'm an irresponsible boss, but I'm about to get right back to it. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.